Greetings guys, it's Irish here. In this video I thought I would do a explained on the Linux file system. Now a Linux file system can be a bit confusing however as I see um, here I wrote down uh, some notes so I'm gonna try to explain the best I can. So first one that you'll go to um, the whole file structure is under the root file structure and then within that is different types of folders and directories so now the normally the root directory is uh, always um, done with a slash key so that would be your root file system now I'm gonna try to make this in same type of order but the so let's so the bin is for the binaries. Now this is type of um, if you install a program uh, that's a binary it would go into this. Um, as you can see some of this is a lot of system stuff so if you cat a file that to read it um, ls copy chmod shown chroot stuff like that uh, a lot of that stuff is already in there. So same thing with like uh, sync su. Uh, so mo mo moving stuff over. So if it uh, it's just binary stuff. The next thing is the boot. Now this is where your kernels stay. Uh, it is probably wise if you don't know how to. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing within the boot system probably you want to keep it don't edit anything add anything delete anything unless you don't know what you're doing so as you see here I have my kernels here and I am running UEFI so if I for whatever reason delete this folder the kernel will not boot up since the kernel is stored in here same thing with grub so I wouldn't be able to go into this system without this folder. The next one is dev. Now dev stands for devices. So this would be something similar like um, uh, let's just go in there. So if we go to like uh, the CPU, the disk, the bus, uh, it's a lot of like just devices. Um, your TTYs in here, your file systems are in here, stuff like that. So if we go up, um, so yeah, we have the CD-ROM, audio, console, the core, stuff like that, audio, or sorry, auto file system. But this also is needed. It's also a virtual directory. So it is needed to boot up into Linux. So the next one is the Etsy. Now this used to be called the uh, ET Cetera, so that's why I call it Etsy. Now a lot of this is more like configuration stuff. So if we go in here, like my Bluetooth, uh, CA certification, um, fonts are in here, my i3 uh, configuration file is in here. Um, the GTK, LVM stuff, mail stuff, a lot of configurations are usually stored so if you download a package um, and you need to uh, change something most likely the configuration file will be in here now like the skel that's for like skeleton the xnrc might be located in that um, like my portage uh, is in here for my gen 2 network manager, stuff like that, open LDAP, uh, I'll just a lot of configurations are stored under here. Uh, the next thing is obviously the home. So this would be the home directory of whatever user. Now if you accidentally delete this, it, it's not gonna not let you boot in there, but you can, it, you could still boot up into your Linux, you just have to re-add your username, which then will 
make your home directory. Now the lib, so lib, lib32, lib64. So now if you are in a multi, um, multi core thing, so if you have a 64 bit and you need 32 bit binaries for say like Steam, VirtualBox, and other stuff like that, uh, you'll have a lib32 and a lib64. Now what this, let me, uh, increase this so we're right here so that little symbol down here means it's this uh, it's sim linked to lib64 so if we accidentally deleted the lib here we'd still have everything that we need because since it is linked to the lib64 so that is what the, and libs are oops, sorry libs are binary or the libraries so if you for whatever reason delete some of these libraries it could mess your system up uh, I'm sure there's there could be a way so like system D if I had system D in here udev uh, gen2 functions sh so a lot of libraries devat device mapper uh, RC stuff like that so it's library based media would be well I, as it sounds like so SD cards USB cards DVD CD-ROM stuff like that you could I have nothing in here because I don't have a USB attached but you can it would show up here if you wanted to MNT is short for mount storage devices. Uh, same thing. You could have a mount on here. So same thing with the USB sticks. Like if I put in a USB stick, it would show up on here uh, in the MNT. Uh, same thing with the media. Opt is where if you decide to compile from source from like github gitlab whatever it will be placed in this folder and then each one so I have Dropbox and Firefox here's my Dropbox uh, Dropbox here again and then Firefox so I being on Gen 2 you would think that this would be filled up more but it's it's not because I think I have the bins for these two so the proc is another one of those virtual uh, file systems that it is needed to run Linux so what proc is it's just information about the computer itself as you see with like a bunch of these numbers but each folder might have say like the CPU type or what type of GPU you have various stuff like that uh, the next uh, one is the root so this would obviously be the directory the home directory of the super user now every single uh, open source oh, I should say not open source but like FreeBSD um, Linux uh, Solaris stuff like that always have a root f root user in Windows it's technically the administrator so you could um, if you decided to delete something like the C drive in Windows it's the same thing as deleting the root folder in Linux here the next one is run uh, run is like system processes store temporary data so like the like console console kit dbus I am running network manager and udev same thing with sudo and udisks those are uh, the udisks and udev is to help mount my USB drive if I do place one in here also sound like a lot of this stuff I have going on boot so like uh, SSHD stuff like this a lot of this is run when this is when my computer boots up if I didn't have the uh, dev sys and 
what's the other one? Proc, I will not be able to run. So those are the three virtual uh, directories that are needed. The next one is SBIN. Now this would be system binaries. Um, so stuff, uh, so it'd be like basic stuff to make a so you don't need to have like a GUI, you don't have to have a desktop environment or a window manager, or anything else like that for it. So like a VLK ID is for to show the different uh, the, the IDs for your partitions and stuff like that. It's called bulk ID. So CF disk, uh, CH CPU. CSTAT, so a lot of system uh, required stuff. Now this might be different in different distributions depending on how they do it, like system D might be in here, um, stuff like that. So uh, the next one would be sys, again another virtual file system, virtual directory, and it's information from devices connected to the computer. So it'd be uh, say like, like firmware, uh, has my ACPI for my X backlight, um, power, uh, some kernel modules might be in here too, as you see here, uh, just different stuff, modules or for the uh, kernel mods, um, bus, block stuff, you know, just system stuff to for the each computer that needs it. Temp is uh, temporary files. Um, each program may need to, uh, like to put information in there temporarily as long as you have the computer on and then it deletes away. So it depends on the applications that are running. So right now I have Dropbox running most of the time um, and if I had uh, another one that requires like another daemon that requires it uh, it might show up on the temporary file. It depends on the application itself. The USR is, I say, the user. Now, the home directory actually used to be part of the user uh, folder system uh, back in the day at the beginning of the Unix stuff, but they decided to move it out of this. But each one is. Um, each one in the user also has a bin, lib, lib32, lib64, and sbin. The difference between the two from right off of root and user is not really big change. It depends on the developer, where they want to place it. To me, it's, it looks like a lot of applications do place it in the USR S bin or local S bin, stuff like that. So the bin here has, say, like a top. Um, see another one. Uh, let's see here. C make, C span, conkey, stuff like that. So it depends on the package. So now if we go to local, same thing. The bin. So there's nothing in there. S bin, there's nothing in there. It depends on the package itself. Again, same thing with that. But so if you have an empty one and you want to place something in there, you are more than welcome to. Like Portage is in here too. And that's where a lot of the system is. So in my notes, let me see if I have it here. I guess I don't. From what, I, from previous like distros that I've been on, it sounds like a lot of um, package managers actually use the USR quite a bit. So if I wanted to go into app editors and then I have say like Bluefish, like Atom is a nice text editor, uh, there's the eBuild and that's the location that it's located in. Um, so each one could have its own S bin. Again, it depends where the developer of the application wants to place it. 
they can place it in the USR slash bin slash S bin whatever or they can just do it to the bin or S bin right off of the root itself. Var is the variable so this could be a mismatch of stuff but if someone if you're trying to troubleshoot something and they're asking for logs most likely you are you will find it in the var so in my var here under log I have daemon.log uh, dmessage emerge.log uh, let's see if we can open this one no it won't allow me to so there is a thing that I like to run that's attached to this and that is emerge dot log and emerge dash fetch dot log so when I'm compiling something I can see what number of package I'm on or if it's going out and fetching the information the metadata off of the website that it needs and making sure where I'm at so if it looks like it's a standstill then I would I can I can view it that way. Uh, each um, distro could have different logs. Uh, the XOR log is also located in this, and uh, so if someone's asking for a XOR log, there it is right there. And the, if you are running a server, you may see a slash SRV, and that's a service a server directory. So if you have your own web server, uh, mail server, uh, stuff like that, then you could FTP server, you may see that also in there. Now the new thing is like the snaps and the uh, flat packs, they may have their own folder uh, located in bin or sbin, depending on the type of thing, most likely it would be in bin. And then you might see a flak pack or a uh, snaps type folder also, and that's where all the snaps and flat packs would go into that folder and be on your system. So there are certain folders that you just do not want to touch. Um, a lot of it is like the spool file, or I'm sorry, the boot file and the etc and maybe the sbin so if you for whatever reason deleted one of these folders it could probably be detrimental to your whole uh, to your whole system so that is like the whole rm dash rf slash the, the, the slash that means remove recursively force delete the entire root system and you will not be able to go into your system whatsoever it completely deletes it it would be the equivalent of deleting the C directory in Windows you just wouldn't be able to boot up at all so that's my uh, general gist of the whole structure of the Linux file system now there could be some differences depending on the distribution again but th you should see the majority of these that you see right here um, but yeah if you guys have any questions uh, please let me know um, I'm going to do a video on the file permissions of each uh, within a directory or whatever of a text file whatever so uh, look out for that, and I will see you guys in the next video.